All right, y'all, so we back at it. The beginning gardening series. Um, ooh, ooh, y'all, excuse me. The camera is unstable. <laughs> um, so what is this video going to talk about? Let's talk about uh, pest pressure and um, how you can handle. Well, let's talk about, you know, different adversities that you might have in the garden. Pests, uh, funguses, disease, things like that. Um, let's talk about all that. So once you got your plants in the ground, the next thing you have to worry about is pests of varying types. Not, not just bugs, but it could be possums, raccoons, mice. Squirrels, birds, um, all of that. You know, anything that's um, considered a pest and how you want to handle it. Um, me personally, I try to. Um, hey, Kenzie, Wendy, come here. Tell the people you were sick, but now you well. Him well now. Oh, and you're going to close that eye. Look at. Stop closing that eye. I promise y'all, he's well. Lord have mercy. There we go. All right, Ken. So, um, you want to go over there? You want to go over there? Okay. See you later. Um, don't pluck on my uh, lawn furniture. I lost your mind. There's too many trees and things I have for you to pluck. You're going to pluck on that. Pluck your ass down to the ground. Okay, excuse me, I have to use cats. Um, so anyway, me personally, I'm not one to tell anybody what to use in a garden unless they ask me what I use. I will tell you what I use and I will tell you um, what I feel the pros and the cons are of those things. Um, and I hesitate to use the word organic and all of that because everybody has their own definition of or what's organic and what's natural and what's this and what's that so what I say is is um me personally I don't use anything I I, 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 I try my best it has to be a last 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 resort and then I haven't had to resort to using anything that are like chemical pesticides and stuff like that in my garden um and what I mean is this if you see me using BT, understand that I know that BT stands for Bacillus thuringiensis or thuringiensis. I think it's actually thuringiensis. And it's, anyway, that is a bacteria. When you hear Bacillus, it means it's a round bacteria. It's a ball. Um, just like if you were to hear, um, they, they got different shapes. I forget, that there's a cylinder shape bacteria and there's also a spiral shaped bacteria but anyway bacillus is the ball of the round one so like i said it's, if you spray it on it's a bacteria it works in that manner however that bacteria is not harmful to humans or mammals or birds or um or um, beneficial insects it's only harmful to uh, cat the caterpillars that it actually kills I'm willing to use that because, think about it like this, I'm sure everybody's heard of uh, biological warfare, just like when they had anthrax out and all that, and it was like that's the way war and battles and stuff are going to be done from now on, or one of the ways people are going to wage war on each other will be biological, yeah, that's basically how that works, so that's not going to be something that is going to linger in the plant and you know that because when it washes off you have to reapply it like once it rains it's done so that should let you know off the top that this is not something that can actually stick around for long periods of time real and true and honest pesticides they don't wash off um, it don't matter it can rain it can storm it can everything they don't wash off it continues to work um, diatomaceous earth it works physically it's like microscopic glass to bugs they never get immune to it another thing with chemical things like seven and stuff like that bugs do have the ability to get immune to them um, and a lot of people don't understand that that's just like if you ever use a certain ant poison and you use it for so long 
they can get immune to it. Or if you've ever noticed that you take a medication and you adapt and it's no longer as effective, um, you've adapted and gotten, you know, I won't say immune, but um, you've adapted and it's no longer as effective as it was. Um, however, will a human ever be Will a human ever adapt to not being able to be cut by glass? No, that's a physical. This is the same thing with bugs. Um, you'll never be able to be able to not be cut by glass. Um, it's just, you know, you'll never build up, you know, that type of uh, tolerance for things like that. So when it when it works in manners like that. I'll use it versus using chemicals. Now, yes, pyrethrins are derivatives of chemicals that come from the chrysanthemum plant, and you can find um, things like that that are just like basically they take chrysanthemum juice, the pyrethrin out of it, and just it's you know they don't add any other chemicals. I don't use anything that's the synthetic pyrethrins because those are the, those are the chemical chemicals, like you know like seven and all that kind of stuff um i don't use any of that stuff um i don't want that stuff lingering in my soils or on my plants uh so that's the reason why i don't use it now do i get on anybody case they use it oh it's your garden you can do what you want you can use what you want um you make the determination whether you want to ingest that or not that's completely up to you um yeah so that's pretty much how i think about that when it comes to pests like birds mice uh, groundhogs raccoons possums um, anything like that that could just they just eat your stuff <laughs> armadillos they dig up stuff moles dig up stuff um when it comes to stuff like like that, the main problem I have around here is squirrels. Um, the cats have effectively ran off the, the majority of the mice. Um, the squirrels are here. They'll, they'll never go away. Just like the airplanes never go away. Is she would hurry up. Anyway, um, there's a blue jay over there, loud. Christmas people. Oh no, the neighbor's cat is over there by the blue jay nest. Oh, uh, okay. Well, um, so, you know, like I said, squirrels, they're here, but they won't really come down around in my fruit trees because my cats are usually on patrol. Every now and again they get a little freak behind them but for the most part, you know, I saw my cats running off some birds out of my fig tree uh, a few days ago. Quite funny. Um, and the rooster crows. Um, but yeah, um, you're going to have to think about what you how you want to create a barrier for that. If it's groundhogs and raccoons and stuff like that, most likely you're going to have to get some chicken wire. You're going to have to get something along those lines to um, create a barrier to keep them out. Um, you can also do that with bugs and stuff too, like using um, tool or, or um, row cover or what have you. Basically, a mesh like netting that's the holes are small enough that the bugs can't get in and lay eggs all over your stuff um, that works very well the only thing with that is make sure if it's something that needs to be pollinated like has male and female flowers you got to get in there and hand pollinate it so you know the pollinators can't get in either with those type of scenarios but you know you got to do what you got to do but those larger animals you're going to have to figure out something a physical barrier or something to keep them out. Um, so, I have seen a possum in my backyard before, but I'm not sure what it was doing. I, I think it was just passing through because I don't have anything back there really for it to eat. 
Now, he better be not going to my neighbor's backyard because my neighbor eat possum. In fact, he like possum. He swear by it. So, <sighs> Mr. Possum might want to stay out of Mr. Johnson's yard. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so those are things that you're going to have to take into precaution. Um, as far as fungus and disease and stuff like that, um, they have organic methods or, you know, somewhat organic methods. Like I said, I kind of want to stay away from that word organic because everybody has these different connotations as to what that means. Kenny is like really sharpening his claws over here. <laughs> He's sharpening on a tree. Are you, are you weakening the tree, Kenny? You're weakening? He's not weakening. Um, but... Uh, but, yeah, it, there are ways such as, like, using copper, um, on plants to help with different funguses and things of that nature. That's considered an acceptable way that, that shouldn't poison you. Um, and, and there are a few other ways such as using peroxide, um, things like that. To spray your plants with that isn't supposed to um, damage your plants and of course peroxide isn't going to damage you and then you have very chemical ways of doing it as well like I said I'm not one to make a judgment call on that you would have to think about you know look at it and think about you know pros and cons and how you'd want to use it you know which ones you'd want to use or how you want to go about that but I want y'all to stay tuned because I'm going to do a video about the best way that I think to prevent soil, uh, soil borne diseases and, and things of that nature. I'm going to do a video talking about that. So y'all stay tuned for that. But yeah, so I think that's the majority of this video really. Um, protecting like for instance if you grow on melons or something you have to figure out a way to protect your melons raccoons and possums and things like that they love to claw into your melons and eat them so um yeah that's and and uh they like to steal tomatoes too squirrels and stuff like to steal tomatoes um i think some squirrels like the tomatoes more than others these squirrels around me i don't know if it's because they have uh, enough other stuff to eat they don't bother my tomatoes, but I also think it's the cats, too, because where they would have to get to to get over to the tomato plants, the cats would, mm -mm, the cats would see them. Um, so, yeah. So they kind of steer clear of that area. Um, but they do have a lot to eat here because there are a ton of acorns. They have a lot to eat, and they also have a lot to drink because I've seen squirrels drinking out of my rainwater, and I don't mind it. Um, so, I'm not saying that they only eat tomatoes because they're thirsty. I think they like tomatoes, quite frankly. Um, I mean, I can see why they like them. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think that covers pretty much what I wanted to cover. Is there anything pest-wise? Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I really wanted to cover other than those things. But yeah, y'all stay tuned. More videos heading your way. Till next time, see you guys later.